Hello! So today is going to be a VOD review format. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you like these videos. I can say it now because I'm not like dialed in focused on the gameplay just yet. Um, also, uh, I'm introducing a YouTube sub goal that will play a game of Olaf Reroll and make a video about it. Um, if we hit 100 YouTube subs, I kind of want to try and instigate some growth and do some little objectives. We'll probably do objectives every 50 subs. Uh, but yeah, because I want to try and get that a little bit climbing. Anyways, uh, I forget what portal we picked. I think it's just the, the champion one, maybe. I, I don't think it matters too much. Uh, but anyways, so this is VOD review format. I'm doing the analysis in post. Um, I'm pretty sure this was maybe the easiest first I got in my life. So I'm trying to see, like, you know, how high roll was it? Did I make good decisions? Um, of those decisions, which was bad. Oh, it's the artifact one. Sorry, I see it now. Uh, so the the portal is the artifact anvil portal. Uh, which sometimes you can high roll into a good spot if you get one of the econ ones. And we'll see what I get. Um, this is some new tech. It's not like the greatest tech. Anyway, it's kind of funny. I made the Olaf one. I'm probably going to buy this Olaf. So some new tech that I figured out is if you buy a Chosen on 1-4, then um, this appears every four shops. So like, I'll say every... Oops. Um, fuck it up my, my system. Every four shops, right? So that means that the next time it will show up is 2-5, right? Which is after... Um, after carousel right so this is round after carousel right sorry if it's messy to write the reason that works out really well is because if you look at like your pre-leveling cycles and your leveling cycles right before carousel so if we're on carousel round so i, I can actually show it up here now Hopefully the sub goal doesn't obstruct too much of this part that I'm trying to explain. But as you can see, this is round one, round two, round three. And then here after the carousel is round four. So what you can do is you can pre-level before the carousel. If you're win streaking, right? If you're lose streaking, you might not have to do this, right? You can pre-level before carousel. And then on this stage, you'll be level five, right? So what that means is you want to basically buy enough exp so that you'll turn level five as soon as you get to that round and then when you turn level five your headliner odds are like 70 percent for a two star so you can convert your opener to a two star opener uh so you can convert your your, your chosen into a two star chosen basically so this works out really well because i high rolled into the um the super fan head uh, the super fan which gives me an extra item so because i already have one item and i have a frontline unit i got dropped two gloves um i don't need the thieves gloves because it's it, it was an olaf right so what i decided to do is i made a um i made a uh what's it called steadfast heart because it's a really good tank item right and it's probably the best tank item you can make with a chain I don't want to commit to a melee carry. If you're, if you're just staying with Olaf and you want to keep Olaf for a while, he's really good at holding melee items. So you can give him like a Titans. Right? I could have easily made Titans Hodge. But instead I'm holding on to these because I'm thinking this is red buff. This is blue buff. And this could be like IE, tank, anything else, right? So, so long as I'm strong enough, it's a bit more risky. But playing towards these outs makes you a little bit more flexible because this is for like four cost, right? Um, I, I'm not too much of a fan of melee carry openers or melee carries in general. So um, I, I just don't win a lot with them. I, I think I'm just not good at playing them really well. Maybe that's a me problem. Maybe they are strong, but I, I don't see them being very strong in this current patch. So um, I'm tr just keeping these open to be flexible, right? Um, if I was committing to just like, oh, I'll just play like Yone or some other shit or some kind of reroll, then you can make like Titans, Hodge instead, and then you'll have a leftover glove, which you can turn into another Hodge, which is also a viable strat. It just, it's just a lot more limiting, right? Making a tank item and keeping all of these to decide where my offensive items go is a little bit more flex. Anyways, so I win out the first two stages. I'm still rich enough that I can make 10 here. I'm holding on to this Kale because I'm thinking, eh, maybe I play Pentakill. A lot of the boards are also very weak, 
Um, something that I used to do, like, you'll hear a lot in this patch, is, like, it's really hard to win streak, so instead you'll kind of go for, like, a lose streak a lot of the time. And I did that for, like, this is after I, like, deranked. I lost, like, 200 LP almost. I think it's almost 200 LP, maybe this is an update in time. <laughs> but I think I lost, like, 200 LP just trying to do, like, lost streak and to get spat, like, the way that people say, like, that's, like, the, the best way to play it. And I just never high rolled a single time. I think in 10 hours, I didn't see a single spat on Carousel one time. And I was like full open almost every single game. It was it was crazy. So I just never got like paid off. I just lost like 12 in a row. So now I'm imploring like more trying to win streak. I should sell something. I think I'll probably forget because I'm dumb. Okay, I sold the Kennen. Okay, I shouldn't have sold the Kennen. I should have sold the Kale because I'm probably gonna switch off the Olaf anyways. Anyways, let's see what I get. So it, it's a pretty easy first three streak, as you can see. I had a good opener because I had a lot of items because I didn't even have to slam an item. I had the super fan opener. It gave me, uh, and I had bruiser plus one instead of pentacle. So I didn't have to play like a Tom Ken. So I could fit my whole board on four. Um, so that was pretty good. Uh, I'm going to get to pick here. I'm just going to take a chain mail because now I can like read aside. The same way I just slammed this, I, can, I took the chain mail because I can make... Um, another steadfast if I need to I can also make Titans and I could do a Titans Hodge right which um, Hodge is hand of justice when you put the tier with the, the glove so I can pair up those items I can have like good melee items and that's still pretty good right anyways I high rolled a Nico in the shop and then I also high rolled um, a bruise another dude um, so this one is the uh, it's the bruiser Olaf which actually works perfectly because I already slammed a tank item so now we have Gargoyles, Bruiser, Olaf. So it's literally like a strict, it, it's basically a, a, a strict improvement on my on my previous position, right? So it's a no brainer to take that. And yeah, so now I'm making 10 and I'm three streaking and I might even four streak or, or five streak because I basically have an Olaf that's up. I have a chosen Olaf that's up two items. I slammed the chain mail uh, because I'm playing against an A D carry so this does attack damage so you need defense uh, or you need armor so I just put the chainmail on him because I'm not going to keep Olaf until the end of the game so and the chainmail it could be a titans if I decide going melee but I'll just let the Olaf hold it because it'll make my it'll make my life a little bit easier also high rolling the Nico gives me plus guardian so now I'm for super fan uh, for super fan what it does is it gives some omni vamp which essentially just makes this guy tankier right Five super fan is where it's lit, and that gives him a radiant item. But to do five super fan, you need to have a super fan chosen. So that's like if I rolled a Nico chosen, or a Kennen chosen, or a Nar chosen. Anyways, I high roll a, a Blitz crank. So because I'm three super fan, I'm deciding uh, set, I can either get Sentinel, which gives him an extra like plus ten armor or something like that. It's not that much. It, maybe it's five or six. I forget. It's really small and negligible. But I think in terms of units, I think. Um, Blitzcrank with Sentinel, especially in this stage of the game, is very hard to kill. He's very strong. He does a lot of damage. So I think, in general, losing the little bit of Omnivan from Superfan when Gragas already like heals himself, which is with his ult, so he's healing himself right now, he's drinking. Um, I decided, yeah, I'll just switch it out. And I, th I think that's the right play. Um, I, it didn't cost me any Econ either. And this Blitzcrank is worth infinite because there's so many games where you'll roll down on level 8. And you'll be like, oh, I really need like a frontline tank unit. I really need like a Thresh or a Blitzcrank or like one of the good ones that I can't achieve. Right? Anyways, look at this high roll. This is pretty high roll actually. It's high roll because I'm getting upgrades for some of the units, right? Um, so now I got a Lilia upgrade which makes me a little bit more tanky. What would be really great right now is if I had like a backline carry, like if I just got like a Senna, right? Like getting a Senna here would be really big. Let's see what Krugs drop me. That's the next important part. I don't know what I'm doing. I have, a, I have an arrow now. I need to like, um, pen one is six. Okay, so I should just use my keyboard more. Because if I do six, I could do a six and a racer. And then I don't have to, like, interfere. What's the pointer? Control-Alt-G. That's fucking ridiculous. Alright, so I'm thinking, should I level here? 
right? Like, what do I put in? And I'm looking at the boards. There's the really strong jazz board, so this guy's also streaking, which I might fight, which is why I'm like, eh, maybe I should uh, figure it out. So I level up. Uh, the reason I leveled is because there was, uh, I have this Seraphine, right? Seraphine gives KDA. So KDA, it's not that important, but the thing that's really great about KDA is it makes all the KDA units more tanky, and it also gives your whole board like 10% extra health. That's why a lot of times you just like throw it in as a, ah, this is for fun. I also got a bow, so now I can make red buff. Remember what I was saying? Like red buff is really good. Blue buff is really good. The reason red buff is really good is because it basically gives you a bunch of attack speed, which attack speed, just every unit kind of likes attack speed pretty much. It just like buffs your damage output by a lot. Because a lot of times you're balancing like, you know, you're balancing like AD, uh, AP items, and then attack speed just works on everybody. It looks so messy, right? But it's like it's really nice to have, and it gives a bunch of attack speed, and also gives like bonus damage, which is irrelevant of whether you're going an AP carry or AD carry, right? So it works out really well. Uh, so I slammed the red buff. Um, I the first augment I took, I didn't even mention it. I took vampirism because vampirism is really strong. It's just like always pretty much a good a safe pick without even having to check stats. This support cash item is probably the best silver you can get because you can just you can just not only do you get a support item which they're all good, like there's very few of them that are bad. Uh, having the one where you can pick them guarantees that you're gonna get one that works well with your comp. So I get gem. Gem is so good. This gem item basically what it gives it gives you gold for every two allies that are alive. So you can get like, you get a bunch of gold if you're like high rolling, right? Then you also get, um, what's it called? Ooh, I switched to Garen. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. I switched to Garen because it gives me four Sentinel. I'll talk about it now, which I think is a bit better than the Bruiser because I'm not playing towards Spellweaver anyways because I don't have an extra Spellweaver. Anyways, this gem gives you plus gold and plus like silver ascension. It's like basically like an extra augment. Like there's the ascension augment, which makes you like after 15 seconds, your team does extra damage. That's what this does. So I, it has a timer and then it when the timer hits zero, it pops gold and then it pops you like extra thing. It's really good early. It pops you extra damage. It's really good early game because it helps you build your econ and early game, like all the units, they don't have like full items. Nobody's really doing like a shit ton of damage. So like a lot of times the fights always last 15 seconds. There's a point where like some of the items were like uh, late game they're not as good because the fights don't last as long because everything's just like super like buffed up. They all have like all their giga stacks and it's like really hard. Uh, certain comps it still works with. So with this version, I also had plus Sentinel, which is why the Garen was definitely a really good choice. Because with four Sentinel, I'm basically super tanky. This whole front line just has so much to get through. So I basically just stall out for gem. And then I gain a bunch of gold, and I'm just, I'm, I'm fast 9, I don't know what I'm doing. This shit's easy. This guy also has a gem, but I don't think he has a chance against me, because he doesn't have as much front line, I don't think. Actually, he has a similar front line, he has 1, 2, 3, he has 3 sentinel? I don't know who was chosen, and I should have checked it, actually. But look at his front line, it's, it's kind of dying, and mine's kind of living. And he also has, like, multiple items on this, uh, Nico. Which just isn't tanking enough, right? But this guy looked like he was in a really good spot, right? Look, he's 50 gold. He has, like, good items. He has the same items as me, except he took Crown Guarded, which is even better combat. Because I have Vampirism. But Vampirism works with, like, the lower your health is, right? Like, I'm at full health, so I'm getting the least value off of it. Anyways, I'm pissed off. Double spat carousel. That's how most people can come back in the game. If you don't know, the most busted spat in the game is a true damage spat. Uh, you might not know it, but this true damage trade is absolutely not balanced. The reason it's not balanced is because it's balanced around the units that it comes with, right? If you think about Echo, or like the only one that's really busted maybe is like Akali now, but those units, like they're usually like melee frontline units. The only long range true damage unit is uh, Senna. And the only other one that's like really super busted is um, the Crowd Diver with Kiana, but that, those are harder to get, right? The true damage spat basically gives you like increased damage and it's increased true damage, right? Based on how many true damagers you have in. The increased true damage is the part that's broken because basically if you don't know what true damage is, it basically is like net damage. It's like it, it disregards basically the tank stats of it. Think of it kind of like a critical in Pokemon almost, right? It doesn't matter how much armor 
uh, somebody has, the true damage will always give like the same, will still give like true damage to a certain extent. Uh, that's what it kind of means, right? It, it basically skips like the da uh, the um, defense stop part of whatever, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so it's not balanced because like it's balanced around the units. Like a lot of these spats are usually balanced towards like the units that are in it, which is why it's really high roll to get a spat, right? Like 8-bit, the units that are in 8-bit, um, they're less, they're a lot more underwhelming until they have 8-bit stacks. And the same with true damage. Some of them are more underwhelming until you have multiple true damage in right um if you can just slam it on a unit like caitlin which is also 8-bit that gets 8-bit stacks excuse me and also snipes the back line it's it's like what the fuck and the same with like ezreal like he just he just shoots a wave and snipes the back line it's like what the fuck like that wasn't in the that wasn't in the market but we had senna which just like does aoe to like frontline unit that was the previous like long range carry but now all of a sudden we could take a long range carry give them plus like 50 percent damage and it, it bypasses uh, defense defense characteristics. Like, it doesn't take into account armor. It's like, what the fuck? Shit's busted. But, you know, it'll, it, it's actually going to get nerfed very soon. So, you know, it's not something to whine about. But just something to point out. I put on the Garen because I'm probably going to, like, not play the Garen. And then I put in this Caitlyn. I level up because it's a free level. And then I could start getting 8-bit stacks. I high rolled into the Caitlyn at one point. So it's like, now I'm just like really set. Anyways, the fact that none of these guys took it is kind of just the degenerate state of the, the game, right? Like a lot of people in this lobby are probably just going for like re-rolls or like hard forcing a certain comp. Like look at this guy, right? He's not very strong. He's basically hard forcing a re-roll. So he didn't take the true damage spat. And I'm last pick and I got a spat. Because all of these people are kind of not, like, they're not they're, they're not playing towards, like, a flexible board. Which, you know, it works in some cases. But that's what happens with the spats, right? That's why the flex board sometimes just saves you. I, I think it's crazy I didn't get a spat. I got a spat as last pick, right? I think it's because, like, the only other guy that's, like, playing kind of flex is, like, Disco. I guess the hard steel guy didn't want it. Like, I'm scouting. I I'm, I'm dumbfounded. I'm like, how did I get a true damage spat? Because I'm already 100 health. This is what I mean. This is like the freest first of my life. That's such a high roll. Because usually what happens is um, my game kind of turns into a 4-1 uh, lottery, right? So what that means is like on 4-1, you usually roll for like your 4 cost chosen. And even if I have like a really high roll position now, I might just bleed out if I don't hit on 4-1, right? Like for example, right now, I'm rolling early. I'm rolling so early because I'm so stressed. Yeah, so I'm actually rolling. So I'm rolling on four one. Um, you should, sometimes you sit, you wait until four two, but I'm rolling early because I want to make sure that I hit uh, the unit that I want. So I hit Senna. I hit Re two. I'm like, can I even play Re two? I just put it in, and uh, I have no chosen right now. Sometimes people true damage spat Re. But I looked, I scouted before, and it looked like nobody was really in a position that they're playing for, um, for Caitlyn. So I would rather play Caitlyn because, like, really, I think Bis Caitlyn with True Damage Spat is uh, Deathblade. I, I remember I looked it up. I think it's Deathblade Red Buff. But like Deathblade, like, it's like close between Deathblade and IE. Right, like Infinity Edge, which is which I have an Infinity Edge, so like I have good Caitlyn items. I don't have necessarily the best Ari items. Uh, I could make Ari items, right? But I, I want to see like if I can hit a Caitlyn Chosen, um, or if I can hit Caitlyn too. I, I took this Disco guy. I don't even know why. I should just sell it. What am I doing? I put Red Buff. Ooh, I don't know. I'd sell Disco. Yeah, yeah, I sold it a turn late. I kind of fumbled the bag here. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I took TF because I think I can slam Gunblade. But the problem is I realized, oh, if I slam Gunblade, I can't true damage spat the Ari because then I won't have any Ari items. Because I only have one tier and I don't have a tier item for Ari. And I was like, oh, wait, I, I kind of fucked up. And that's why I switched. Anyways, uh, Shoujin is the super fan item. So I kind of want to get rid of Shoujin. So I can lose super fan and play four Sentinel because right now I'm three Sentinel. I'm kind of like messing up my transition here really difficult uh, i usually struggle with transition so it's good that i'm really healthy and really rich uh, i need to get better at that like that mistake with the tf imagine i didn't hit the caitlin right the caitlin's like a little bit high roll but not really because nobody's really going caitlin this is the other true damage player that i scouted and i saw that he had like 
Ezreal's. I think he's still going for Ezreal. Um, he has duplicators, so I think he's just going to try and play hard steel the whole game. Anyway, so it's not like that bad. Like, eventually I'll hit a Caitlyn. But, like, the little fumble with the TF, the reason I, I did that was because I kind of looked at my items and like, got oh, dizzy, right? Because, like, this and this is Archangel. This and this is Gunblade. So, at a glance, you look at your items and you're like, oh, I have Bist TF. I have Archangel, Gunblade, Super Fan. I'm good. But then, like, you look at it again and you're like, wait, if I make Archangel, I can't make Gunblade. Oh, if I make this, I can't make Shoujin. Oh, if I make this, I can't make that. And it's like all of a sudden it falls apart. Because, like, that's what happens sometimes when I look at items. I think it happens to everybody, though. Um, anyways, I'm like. I think I'm like, my whole board is fucked. I'm 3 true damage. I need an Echo, because then I could have 4 true damage, 4 Sentinel. I'm thinking if I sell this Ari, because I don't even have Ari items. Yeah, I just sell the Ari, because I'm like, fuck it, I need Echo in. Uh, the real answer, I think, was sell Nico to get rid of the super fan. Oh, I lost my inking. Okay, I guess the rest of the video, we don't do ink. Anyways, if you made it this far in the video, um, so I lost one or two battles in between my transition i think if i transition cleanly i might have uh not lost a battle i'm still gaining gold from uh the gem as you can see uh but yeah bang it's kind of playing itself now now usually with caitlyn you want to have like a dual carry setup um the reason you want to dual carry with caitlyn is that sometimes she just like doesn't hit any units so a lot of times you like to have, like, I, I think it's best to have, like, um, somebody that can snipe backline a little bit easier or get around the tanks. So you either want, like, some kind of, like, melee unit that can kind of shred, um, or you want something that goes backline. In this case, a lot of times you're just building towards a Kali, right? If you're playing true damage Caitlyn, uh, this true damage stat's busted. So I, I already explained why it kind of works on Caitlyn. It's, like, really good on a range unit, basically, the true damage spat. You can put it on anybody. Um, like, I've seen True Damage Zed pop off as well. Uh, it's pretty much, like, almost the best item to put on any unit. But it's just a matter of, um... It, it just works really well with Caitlyn because of the different interactions that she has. So now I lose Super Fan. Uh, I switch one of the Guardians. Uh, yeah, this is fine, I think. I, I just don't need Nico basically. So I'm like, I should build something else. Uh... I think I remember hearing Blitzcrank is mana locked, so like you don't necessarily need to put Protector's Vow on him. Because he doesn't really cast that much faster. But um, I'm just building tank items with my remaining items. And now I'm just looking, I'm like, yeah, that looks fine. Uh, but yeah, just look at the Caitlyn. Just look how much damage she does. Because she's doing all this bonus true damage. Right? This is an Ari comp with Sentinel Frontline. Like, imagine how useless it is when I start ignoring the fact that they're Sentinels, right? <laughs> like, so my damage just ignores that fact, pretty much. More or less, you know, I'm kind of simplifying it a little bit, but it's kind of how, that's kind of the concept behind it. But yeah, I, I lost one fight during my transition on 4-1 because I just didn't have a Chosen in. Right, like I bought the TF and I didn't play it. If I played the TF and I played my board properly on 4-1, I definitely could have won the 4-1 fight as well. So yeah, I'm just kind of shuffling units. Uh, I'm saving Econ here because I feel like I'm strong enough. I have Blitzcrank 2 with 4 Sentinel. It seems like it's good enough. Excuse me. Blitzcrank 2, full items. Um, even though like the rest of my board is kind of shit. It's like, whatever. This is a Jax guy. Um, he's not going to beat me. He didn't even hit Jax 3. I feel it. Uh, that happens to me sometimes, too. Uh, this Jax guy got dropped two spats, I guess. I don't know. He has a Hyper Pop and an Emo Emblem. And no Jax 3. This Jax comes really sucks when, when spats are dropped, I find. Like, I, I, I've played the Jax comp a couple times. And a lot of times that I play it, um, like, there's, and there's a spat on Carousel. It's like you can't really take the spat and play it because the spats are all useless on your comp. And you kind of have to prioritize taking a different item and putting on the jacks or the lux and have dual carry jacks lux or dual carry jacks and crowd divers with zed. Like there's different ways to play it, but the jacks comp kind of falls apart if all you have is like a jacks upgraded and three items for jacks. Right? You need like your tank items on some other dude. Like you need like some spread of damage because as soon as the whole team focus fires the jacks, then he dies right and that's what happened there like he tried to like maybe take a spat maybe that was the guy that took one of the spats one of the times um but like he just kind of didn't have enough 
like the spats were kind of useless. He didn't have enough secondary damage, and plus he didn't even hit the jacks. So it's just like GG. Um, I don't think I have anti-heal, so I'm making anti-heal. Do I put on the little dude, or do I put on the big dude? I put on the Kennen. I think just because I'm thinking in my head, I'm gonna sell Kennen anyways. I think my my capped board is that I sell Kennen, uh, put in a Kali. I haven't hit an Akali yet, but I haven't really been rolling, but I think that's fine. Scouting out my opponents. Uh, that guy's chosen Akali, so that's probably why I haven't seen one. Just a couple out of the pool. Uh, but I'm just so far ahead. Right? I still have this needless gem, and usually the gem starts to fall off. But it's like, I do so much damage that, like, sometimes the fights end before the gem even procs. Right? And it's just like... You know what I mean? I have Vampirism, by the way, I'm pretty sure. Right? I should double check it. Did I actually take Vampirism? 27 minutes. And it was like right. Sorry, we're going back in time. Yeah, I literally took Vampirism. 27, 30. Right here. That's where we were. Yeah, it's like, I I'm not even close to capped out. You know what I mean? I can lose all my health and then I'm capped out, you know? I have, I have like, a dead augment, basically. But you know what the problem is? Like, look, there's an Ari player. This is a reroll Yone. This was a, uh, he just took a true damage spat, but he's like me, but weaker. Then we have this, and the guy with that, with the thing, he took a rolling augment. So like, even though I have like, vampirism, I technically have three combat. This guy took a rolling augment, and he has two lesser duplicators. I think there was two RE players, and then there was uh, the Jax reroller and something else. Yeah, like this is one of the RE players. But like all these, because the RE players are contesting each other, they don't have like completed boards. You know what I mean? Like this guy isn't gonna beat me ever, because like the RE matchup is like a good matchup for Caitlyn, right? or true damage right because the true the whole point of the Ari board is that they're stalling with the sentinel front line but it's like you can't really stall with the sentinel front line if i'm true damage it's it's just less effective oh he beats me oh i lost two fights yeah this guy uh, this guy was kind of strong because he had gem as well so he just got through my front line because i have like a cannon and an echo one if i had like six sentinel in or um six true damage i win for sure the other guy's crowd diver. That's fine. I find a Yorick. I can just play the Yorick over the the dude. I should just play the Yorick over um, the Amumu in the top left corner. Sorry, my inking program crashed and I don't want to restart the recording because then it's, then it's a big problem with my editing end. This guy switches to Jin Carry with True Damage Spat. I guess that's kind of cool. This is kind of, it's kind of okay, but he's level eight. So I don't think he's going to hit it, but he, he's, I think he's just trying to go nine. So you, if I was in his spot, what I would have done is I would have gone for a three-star frontline unit, right? Because I had two lesser duplicators. And I would have tried to greet it to like try and hit. Maybe he did try that and it didn't work. And he's only 40 gold, level eight. I don't know. I, I think keeping the Ezreal is probably better. I'm pumping some EXP because I'm thinking like, ah, I could just go nine next. Anyway, it's a full spat emblem. Um, if I can, I'll take the Crowd Diver emblem here. The reason you take the Crowd Diver emblem is because there's a Crowd Diver player who is just going to get it, and then he's just going to be really strong because you get six Crowd Diver for free. Um, you can get six Crowd Diver if you have a Crowd Diver chosen, and you put in all the Crowd Divers, but then that forces you into, like, this weird board where you have, like, a bunch of useless units. Like, if you didn't three-star Katarina or you have a Evelyn, then you, then you have, like, random Evelyn, random Katarina, and it's just kind of shit, right? Um, so a crowd diver emblem is always like the best thing you can get. It also gives any unit basically plus 70 damage. That's what crowd diver six is. It's like 70% bonus damage, which is insane. You put that on any unit, they're busted. So it's it's probably like next to true because true damage is the only reason true damage is so broke is because it's craftable. Anyways, I found two Kianas, which means I'm gonna take the Kianas. Oh, just put it in, bro. Okay, I'm putting two Caitlins. I have a tight I don't know who to put it on. I want to put on Kiana. So I just put on bench on Kiana. Uh, I'm thinking in my head, maybe I get Caitlyn 3. Because I, I just, I, I was holding Caitlyn's because I'm rich. And I rolled down and I have two Caitlyn 2's. Uh, two Caitlyn 2's is even bad. 
Um, because the thing is, if you can itemize both Kate, you see sometimes people itemize two Caitlyn's, but it's because Caitlyn also gets the, like, the secondary Caitlyn still gets the 8-bit stacks, right? She's still, like, a unit, she's still, like, a ranged unit that has, like, a death blade for free. That's basically how you can look at the 8-bit stacks, right? Like, when you have, like, high 8-bit stacks, it's pretty much like a death blade for free. So she's still broken, she's still really good. Uh, but I probably want to put in, I want to put in Kiana, just put in Kiana. Oh, I'm putting in 6, actually, yeah, that's fine. I'm dropping to two Sentinel. Actually, I should get, I should swap out the Yorick for one more Sentinel. I think four Sentinel is probably better than Guardian on the other dude. Hmm. Yeah, usually this comp falls off when you don't have a secondary carry, but I think a lot of people's boards are just so weak and I have so many stacks on my um, Caitlyn. And I'm just like, ah, oh, whatever. Honestly, I think Alawi is Alawi one is probably better than York one in this spot as well. Just having like extra front line because I'm playing against Ari boards. So the Alawi, what you do with the uh, Ari board with the Alawi is you put the tentacles on one side and the Alawi on the other side, so that the Ari just shoots the tentacles and she wastes a bunch of casts, right? Because the whole thing that you're on is you're kind of like on a timer, right? It's like, can I kill this before like my front line dies? Because like the Ari's gonna the Ari's gonna out damage you like because she's just like chain casting with her item build. Right, and she's like healing a bunch on herself, so like chip damage, if you don't like one-shot her, she basically just heals it up, so she has good sustain as well. So a lot of the times, you just want to, um, you just want to stall her out as much as you stall, as much as she stalls you out, and then it's just like a waiting game, and you just win. Anyways, uh, everybody is 1 HP. Uh, I'd be shocked if I lose from this spot. But as you can see, I didn't really do much this game, right? I kind of just had a, a, a good opener. Uh, I played the opener really well because I of uh, the trick that I told you guys and I, I high rolled into a two cost chosen Which isn't that much of a high roll. It was like a 70% chance, but I just high rolled into one that was like pretty usable Right, I hit Yorick too. So now I'm stuck with Yorick uh, I'm upgrading some shit. I'm just rolling here I don't want to over greed the econ because I'm kind of worried about this crowd diver guy So I'm looking for like a Kiana too uh, This guy is Lulu 3 RE1 Oh, this guy's just in dire straits. Yeah, this guy's fucked. He has Blitz 1 as well. This guy's a Crowd Diver spat. He has a Kiana. So he's like the real threat. This uh, Crowd Diver guy. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, this guy, I don't even know how he lived this long. I guess the Lulu 3 kind of carried. He went for Lulu 3. He has full items on both. He didn't get a blue buff at any point. Oh, he has a blue buff on the other dude. I don't know what he did. Yeah, there's no way he's beating me. And then... Oh yeah, it's a first, because my clone beat the Crowd Diver guy. But I think the Crowd Diver guy was probably the most scary, but I guess, like... Because Crowd Diver is more of, like, positioning, right? Because the Crowd Divers will stun the Caitlyn, and then if you have them in a certain way, then you can kind of get hit. And it's a bit awkward. Anyways, um, so what are the takeaways from this game? Um, this little trick that if you buy a 1-4 Chosen that you can upgrade it after is pretty nice. Um, obviously you need like some sort of playable board when you do this because like you know if not you you won't win the first three matches anyways and then you might want to lose streak it's up to you but I've kind of been imploring this a little bit more because even if you win lose win lose uh, I feel like this this trick is still kind of fine because you can save this two cost chosen for most of stage three so it actually pays dividends to buy it early and buying it on two five is pretty good. And then yeah, just take a take a true damage spat. E easy win. GG. Shake my hand. Bye bye.